I'm Taylor Castle, and I'm Kimberly Pearson, and today we're going to be talking about mandatory organization. So first we're going to start off with the pros. Why should organization be mandatory? So UNOS, the United Network for Organ Sharing, works to match organ donors with organ recipients. Um, every day there's tons and tons of people that get put on the list to need a new organ, um, whether they're, whether or not theirs is working properly or just whatever for whatever reason. Um, UNOS has data on their website and they have stated that every 10 minutes somebody is put on the organ donation list. So if you have 10 minutes in an hour and then however many hours in a day, think about how many people are added to the list every single day. There's a chance that every day somebody can die while waiting on the list for their organ donation. Um, obviously, a donation process isn't easy and it takes a while to get a donation. You're not guaranteed to get it within a day, so people can die waiting for their, to even receive their organ. Um, but being an organ donor, you can save eight lives just being one donor. For this year, for the 2018 year, um, 114,000 people needed organ donation transplants. While that is a huge number, 27,000 people were able to receive those transplants. So that's still a large number of people waiting on the list to even get their transplants to them. Organ donors have the ability to donate all kinds of organs. Um, living donors have a little bit less um, ability because they're obviously living and they still need their organs, um, but deceased donors can donate all kinds of things. Um, as you can see on this photo, there's more donors for certain like big donors or big organs such as like lungs and hearts and stuff like that that tend to be really healthy in individuals whereas um, like liver transplants and kidney transplants that are more often needed there's a higher waiting list because less people are donating those things so as I was saying um, living donors are able to donate one out of two of their kidneys, as well as one out of two of their lungs, or just a part of their lung. Um, they're also able to donate parts of their intestine and pancreas. Um, so while many people think that that might be scary, being taking away part of their organ while they're still living, um, medical professionals wouldn't let you do it if it wasn't safe for you and if you couldn't still live while also giving that part of you to somebody else who really needs it. Um, deceased donors are able to give any of the organs listed on this list um, as long as those organs are healthy once they pass. Okay, so many people are against organ donation because they feel like it's very disruptive to their grieving process. Um, but there's actually a lot of myths behind organ donation. Um, that actually prove that a uh, grieving process is very possible for families and loved ones. Um, there's concerns that family members don't have time to say goodbye to their loved ones once they pass. Um, they, through when their family member or loved one is dying, they're able to be with that person through the whole process. And even once they do are officially pronounced dead, they still have a couple minutes that they can get in their last goodbyes. Um, there's also beliefs that individuals can't have an open casket. Um, organ donation does not totally like tear apart your body, like you can still be put in a casket and still have a very nice burial. Um, along with that, people are concerned with body dismemberment, which then would prevent an open casket because they don't want people scared of how they look in the casket. Um, 
the donation process and medical professionals actually work very hard to make sure that donors after death are put back um, on the outside and stitched up so that they look almost similar to what they looked like when they were still living. Um, so for example, if somebody is donating their eyes, um, sort of like a, a ball shape similar to your eye, like almost like a ping pong ball would be inserted so that once your eyes are closed in like a casket, for example, it would still maintain the shape of your eye. Um, another example would be like if they take bone, they have a bone replacement that puts back in and stitches you back up so that you still look like you have the same structure of your body. Um, another part of the grieving process that families are concerned about is that oftentimes people don't indicate whether they would or would not like to be an organ donor. So when it comes time to a family member passing away, the grieving family is then asked whether they would like to have, say, their child's organs donated or not. Um, this could be a very difficult decision for a family to make, especially if the death was sudden or not expected. Um, so making organ donation mandatory would almost eliminate that decision for family members to have to make in that tough time. So there's some common arguments that people make when they ask, like, oh, why don't you want to be an organ donor? Um, so one of those comments is like, oh, well, it's my body, I can do what I want with it. Um, while that's obviously true, people argue that the right to life should often counteract the right to freedom of your choice for your body. Um, so say there's a person in the hospital room next to you dying and you're just there for like, I don't know, to get your flu shot. Um, if you see that person dying, that person has just the right, just as much right to life as you do. Um, they were just unfortunate enough to like have medical issues that are putting them at this point. Um, so for you to be sitting there being a healthy individual and say they need a kidney transplant, you losing one kidney to give to them to have the right to keep living um, doesn't seem like that much of a problem. Another common um, argument is that people are like, oh, well, it's against my religion. Which in some cases, yes, there are religions that are very much against organ donation. But at the same time, most, if, most religions are not against organ donation. Most religions are more concerned with the soul getting back from the body to its final resting place than tearing, tearing up the body. Um, so there's only a few major religions that will not let you donate. And then, like I said before, a lot of people argue, I can't have a funeral if I, or, if I donate my organs. Um, funerals are very possible. You can still choose whatever type of burial you want, whether it's um, cremation or being buried in a casket. And that's always an option whether you would like to have an open or closed casket as well. Um, so funeral processes are very much able to ha still happen with organ donation. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss um, some of the cons that are associated with mandatory organ donation. Um, although organ donation does save lives, um, there is, um, it's true that one single person can save up to seven or eight lives with their organs, and that is a wonderful thing. Um, it is also true that there is a really big shortage of organ donors around the world, so there are more people on the waiting list than there are um, actual organ donors. But despite these factors, um, organ donation really should not be mandatory for multiple Okay, um, organ transplant surgery is actually a high-risk surgery and it's not always going to be successful. So although um, it's a wonderful thing and it can save lives, it's not always going to be successful. Um, there's high-risk factors involved. 
Um, in the case of living donors, as Taylor discussed, um, uh, there's people that can donate parts of their kidneys and um, whatnot to help save loved ones and even random strangers if they would um, choose to. But um, the healing process after that is extremely painful and very prolonged and um, it's not always guaranteed. So um, you're not always guaranteed to come back from you know, donating um, a, an organ. And on the side of the recipients, um, it's not always gonna be successful because your body can reject the organ, your body can actually reject it once it's um, successfully placed in your body. So um, there can be complications that arise um, with that within up to a week or even decades after you have your surgery. Um, so with the case of living donors, um, the healing process can be prolonged like I stated before. Um, and it's high risk and also not all hospitals keep track of their donors after they donate so um, as I said the, the the healing process and there can be um, there can be complications that can arise decades after you donate and the hospitals won't know because they don't make you come in and check up on you so um, you can have complications that arise almost instantly um, after a day or two and then you can have problems that arise years later and you won't be able to catch it because you didn't know because the hospitals don't keep tabs on you like that. Um, another big factor is appearance. Um, so it's just plain out human nature to really care about what you look like. Um, it's I can't speak for everybody but there is um, a lot of people that do care about what they look like. And um, there was a study that was um, created that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but a number of people say that they don't want their bodies to be mutilated or cut up after they die. Um, it's kind of a respect thing. So they want their bodies to be respected after they die. Um, and they don't want you know their organs to be taken out of them. Um, this is a quote from a study that was conducted um, this respondent was female and she was a 30 year old and she says quote to be honest with you I do not care I do care what happens to my body after I die I may be dead but it is still my body and I want to look right after I die um, so that is just one respondent out of um, I think a thousand people in that survey but um, a lot of them said the same thing there was another um, man that said something like, I do not want my daughter or my kids to see me with no eyes or no skin. And that's a very valid argument. If, you're, um, if you have kids and you have um, your funeral and um, you don't have any skin, they take skin off of you, um, they don't want their family to see them like that. Um, a lot of people just, they just want their bodies to be respected after death. Um, a huge, huge factor of why organ donation should not be mandatory is religion. Um, although a number of the religions um, are not against organ donation, there are a few that are, and that is something because um, I don't know if you guys know about the starfish story, but the little boy, there's thousands of starfish and the little boy picks it up and throws it in the ocean. And somebody says, why are you doing that? You're never gonna make a difference. And he picked it up and threw it and said, I made a difference to that one. So it, the same thing applies to this religion, uh, this religion thing. So although the majority of them support organ donation, there are a few that do not. And that is very, very important. Um, religion is a lifestyle for people. It's not just a hobby. It's what they live by. It's They live their everyday life doing this religion. And it's very, very important to some people. So making it mandatory would cause an uproar. Um, uh, religious groups took part in an MDT study to state the rules and regulations of you know, organ donation and what they support and what they do not support. Um, they came up with um, thoughts as, they think that organ donation is, it's kind of playing God. So I mean, they say if if God wants it to be their time, then they believe that it should be their time and that they should not receive someone's organ or they should not be giving 
they're organ away to someone else because it is their time and because God said that it was their time and that they need to come and they need to go. Um, also, freedom of religion is a guaranteed right in the um, Constitution. It is the very first amendment of the Bill of Rights. And so making mandatory, making organ donation mandatory for everybody, um, for those who for those who support religions that are against organ donation, um, it would kind of be similar to taking away their guaranteed right in the Bill of Rights um, because they wouldn't be able to practice that religion um, to the full extent because you know they are being forced to do something that they do not want to do, something that goes against their religion. So it's a little unconstitutional if you think of it like that. Okay, um, another factor is distrust within the medical system. Um, there are a lot of patients that um, have experienced um, problems with the medical system with hospitals and doctors and um, Although hospitals, um, surgeons, and doctors, they take an oath um, to save lives and to help as much as they can for people, but um, many people argue that um, if organ donation is made mandatory, that um, doctors might not be as inclined to do everything, do everything they can to save someone's life. So if someone is, you know, dying and um, they're in the hospital and these doctors see that they're an organ donor and there's seven other people in the same hospital that are in need of organ transplant, seven other patients that these doctors associate with every day um, that are in need of organ transplant and there's this one person that is, you know, pretty close to death, um, they will be less, they might be less inclined to do everything they can to save that one person because the organs from that one person can save so many other lives. Um, so participants in a recent study expressed their thoughts on organ donation by saying, um, you know, if my heart is still beating, I want my organs inside of me. So this is um, associated in the case of brain death. Um, a lot of people, you know, if um, their loved ones are declared brain dead or if they, you know, are thinking about the subject and debating it, they say, well, if my heart is still beating, I am still technically alive, um, and I don't want my organs to be harvested from me because I am not dead, you know? So that is another factor of why people um, are a distrust in the medical system. So overall, making organ donation, um, if the government makes organ donation mandatory, um, it's, it's just kind of, it's not right because we own our bodies. We are born with our bodies and we grow up with them and it's just our organs and our pieces of us, they're just building blocks of who we are. And for someone to be able to tell us what happens to our bodies even after um, we've passed, it's just, it's crazy. Um, it's, you can't, tell someone what to do with their own body. If, if someone doesn't want their body to be touched or cut, or you know, people are allowed to refuse surgery in hospitals. They can do that. If they don't want surgery, um, the surgeons can't operate because they say no. Um, so just the thought of someone being able to tell you what to do with your body, and especially the building blocks of your body, things that make who you are, um, the fact that someone could be able to tell you what to do with that is just mortifying. Um, although it is a wholesome act, it should be, it should be acted upon by choice because, again, it is our own bodies and we should be able to do what we want with our bodies. Um, a better solution um, to get more donors on the list, like I said um, earlier, there is a very huge shortage of organ donors and that's why this is a very big controversial topic. Um, I feel that a better solution uh, rather than making it mandatory would be to better educate people on what organ donation is and how many people are, are on the waiting list and how big of a shortage there is on organ donors because not a lot of people know and um, a lot of the times when people are asked to be organ donors is when they get their driver's license and a lot of the times those kids are 16 or 17 or 18 years old and they don't understand really the full like importance of organ donation how it can save lives. 
So I believe that a better solution, rather than making it mandatory, would be just to educate, educate, educate people on what organ donation is and how important it is in people's lives.